this is an exciting day. We are starting our first lesson, lesson one of, we're going to do the ABCs of Psalms 119. And, and um, what does that mean? It means exactly what it sounds like. We're going to go through the Aleph bet from the acrostic for Psalms 119. And we have, I love this, the way that we've thought of going through this is because we've got a lot of great input from you. And I would like you to continue to input because we have like 23 lessons. I think um, this is one of those things what we love having you live because I'm going to love the input, love us like a round table, like we're just kind of sitting around in my living room and we're all opening up our, our Bibles, all of our books, whatever, our study material. We're going to go through this together. But I understand that there's days we can't all show up at the same time because it's a kind of a commitment. But these are all going to be recorded. They will all be in your library. The only thing I encourage you to do is when you go into your library, when you're doing that, would you leave comments in there so that it's, you're in, in still engaging, you know, instead of just kind of, I won't say voyeur, but you're, you know, some of us, I'm the kind of the person I kind of like to walk in and sit in the back and watch what's going on. And then I might leave. And I realized over the years that how much the person who's has put all this work in to put something together just needs me to say hi, or thank you, or or your hair looked funny today, whatever. It just like something that I knew that they, they knew that I was there. And so I have been really mindful of that. And I was, I'm committed to kind of pass that on. It makes a huge difference. You'll notice through, as we uh, go, we're coming up with something coming kind of like a, a speaker spotlight or a teacher spotlight is asking you guys to go in and watch something from a different speaker every week and make a comment. So that, that, that you know, we have teachers who give time and they're like, oh, people are actually looking at this. They actually watched my stuff. I'm glad I, I put the energy and the time into that for them. And so we're going to, because we do send them the comments. One of the things we ask of our instructors, whoever they are, is that they uh, respond to comments and also that they have um, office hours. If they are a regular instructor for us, we ask that they give us an hour a month of office hours. And what does that look like? Some people, we, I like to kind of reinforce this is their office hours if you've been to university, if you've been uh, to a school that opened up office hours for your professors, what would happen is that they would have a window of time that you could come by their office and you could just say hi and sit down and talk to them. Or you could come in and say, I'm struggling with this. What do you think about this? That they have those hours. So it's the same thing, but it's just like this on, on Zoom, right? That they, they open up their offer and they'll just sit here like this. We sit here for an hour. Sometimes I just sit here working and, and, you know, maybe that day no one shows up, but sometimes a lot of people show up or sometimes one person and maybe Cindy asks a question that Caitlin wanted to really know. And she didn't ever kind of felt embarrassed to ask it, but just sitting there and being there, she got answers to something. And most everyone has videos turned off sometimes, or they're running around doing something, but it's just the, a minute to stop in and ask a question. And, and like, for example, you have someone with the experience like Valerie Moody, I'll use her as an example. You have Valerie Moody, who's been doing this. I'm, I don't want to embarrass her and say 40 years, but I mean, over 20 years <laughs> with amazing books. It, many of us use them as our resources, especially like her, for our, our, uh, the times in the sea, you know, we're doing the, our festivals and we're preparing for things. A lot of us grab her book as our go-to and a lot of us have it dog-eared tagged up and maybe on our second copy give them away because it's a great treasure right she has a great book on prayer i know for um she's going to be doing a woman's i mean a prayer conference for us at the end of next month in august based on her book on prayer so you have someone with the, with a I, I don't want to say be a respecter of persons i'm just saying with her experience um, with the books that you might have read that maybe you would have never had the opportunity before to 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 have a one on one conversation with that person or even talk to them. Maybe you saw them at a speaking an engagement and said hi and shook their hand, but not to sit down with them for an hour and actually ask questions. So I really encourage you to look on your band events, look who has office hours and be like, you know what, I always wanted to ask this question, she'd be a good person. And we every single person who is scheduled to be a for their office hours, not only um, are they giving, I mean, it was, I love that Dr. Dina Dye says, I, can I still keep coming in and doing office hours with you guys, even though I'm done teaching the class and we finished our, the class, she's like, can I still come in and do those? What a great, oh, yes, that's the answer. Yes, of course you can, because we have a lot of ladies who will come in and go, gosh, I read your book and that was crazy. What the heck are you trying to say right there? And she loves those questions. 
they um, love them, love it, love it, love it. And not only are they want to be there with for you, all of us want to be there for you, but we also want you to feel comfortable asking the silly questions that you might be embarrassed to ask someone else or ask in a different setting. And you'd feel like you didn't have anyone else to ask. I've always wanted to know, I've been doing this for a long time, but I always wanted to know this one thing. Hopefully you'd find one instructor that you felt comfortable that you could ask that question because they all want to answer those questions, the very basics to the most complex. They're excited about either challenge. So I just want to encourage you this morning for that. I just want to open up, Father, I just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this amazing opportunity that we get to do this. That we woke up this morning and got to take a big deep breath, Father, and you gave us one more day, one more day to align with who you are and to be able to walk out your will here on this planet. Father, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart today would be acceptable, pleasing to you. They would bring you honor and glory. I ask, Father, that you would stir up a love for this psalm, stir up a love for even more of your word and, and for your, your language, that you stir that up inside of us and you put a hunger in us. You create time uh, where maybe we don't have time to study or we don't have time to do things that you would show us and redeem the time that we spend in that in other areas. And I thank you. I ask that you bless every single woman who's here live watching with me right now, sitting around my virtual living room, but also all those who are listening now later and they're listening on the replay. Would you just give a special blessing to every single one of them right now in their home? as your word dances in their hearts, dance in their mind, and hopefully eventually dancing across their lips. Amen. Well, I'm gonna try to do this really fun because <clears throat> if anyone who was on last night, you would, you'd laughed at me trying to do my, I'm, I'm, I usually use a different PowerPoint system <laughs> and I'm trying to get more fancy and use my little PowerPoint instead of using a different, so um, many of you, uh, we've already got touched base. We've talked or I've gotten some contacts information back from you for from um, band on this, which is very exciting. But I just want to go over quickly, like what are the goals going to be for here? The number one goal of this is that you totally fall in love with Psalms 119. It isn't the one you go back, go through like when you're a kid really fast because it was the longest one to read and you need to hurry up and check it off the reading box. If you had the little chapter readings that you had to do for school or Sunday school or church or something, if you were like me and you had to do that, I just want you, all of us to fall in love with Psalms 119 like we have never done before. I want you to fall in love deeper with Torah because as we go into 119 and we start learning, as we go through each Aleph bet together, I want, I pray that then as you go into your studies for Torah, that that just ca causes you to fall even deeper in love because as we will be hitting a new Torah season, you know, cycle, I can't believe we're coming up on Deuteronomy already, but as we start to hit a new cycle, you'll begin to maybe look up one word, or maybe you did one last year, you'll do two this year, and you'll see the letters in a different way. The, the hieroglyphic or the movie of that letter, right? That it's going to be three-dimensional. And all of a sudden, even if it's just one letter in that section, just dances for you. Um, and he just touches your heart with it. Then this is, you've, we've met the goal for this class. I want to inspire all of us to memorize his word. Now, the thought to me is initially when I said, let's, we're going to memorize Psalms 119. I just went, I think that's a goal I shouldn't put on there. That's craziness. That's like the longest chapter. And we're going to, we're going to memorize it. But you know what? When I, I was reminded instantly, the father showed me when I was at one point needing, I was not saying wanting, but I actually was needing to learn how to play uh, the keyboard. And we, I was in a situation where we did not have a worship leader and I didn't want to do it by um, constantly just doing it by the, the songs that were playing. Um, <laughs> and so I prayed. I'm like, Father, I need to learn. I need to learn this keyboard. I need to, I don't know what to do. Uh, I kind of, I, I asked a person to kind of help me. It was overwhelming. I'm just staring at this keyboard that looked ginormous to me. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And, it all, and all I heard was simple. I never get these big, long dreams. I don't get any, what I get is usually very simple, quick instructions. But when I hear it, I know a lot, you know what I mean? Like it's very dimensional once I hear it. So all I heard is, it's only seven keys. And I'm like, what? 
it's only seven keys. So I run over to the keyboard and I count and I'm like, Maybe, oh my gosh, it is seven keys. Now that wasn't counting the black ones, but the white keys, there was only seven. So I knew that it was God because I hadn't counted them before. And, and that's kind of what I heard in my heart when I was started struggling with that. We, let's just, we don't need to memorize that. However, out of my mouth over the last six months, what I have been saying is one of the things I love about the fact that the father chose to birth me in this process through a Christian church with a Christian pastor in a Christian environment and all the things that he chose to bring me through this process, instead of being angry about why didn't I know all these other dimensions or why didn't they ever teach me? Why did you choose to do that? what he showed me was that I would have never memorized the word because I feel like in our, we'll say movement, in our, in our, in our, in our prophetic movement, in this, in these, in this, whatever, in this journey, most, what I've seen that has fallen off the most is memorization of the word. So if I've been saying that for the last six months and I didn't put it in here, then I, I would have failed. So here's what I'm going to say, y'all. It is eight verses every work week it's eight verses and i want to talk about each with each one of us about what are some ways today today's an introduction we're going to go through and we're going to hit all of next week but um i want to ask you guys you know what are your examples of how what are some good ways to memorize and how can we do that the other thing is we're gonna i didn't put on here is is we're gonna be praying 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 these scriptures um amanda did such a fantastic job for us um so Amanda McFadden, I printed mine out. I was going to laminate it, but I put them in plastic sheet protectors and it's ready and said, you have this. If you go into your library under this call, it'll say the welcome call. I put it in multiple places, but today is called, the video is not there, but it is available. The PowerPoint's in there. Notes are in there. This praying Psalms 119 is in there that you can print it off and have it. And what we're going to do is she has, she has, I'll give you an example. She has written out every single Aleph Bet letter. I mean, every single eight verses, which is each, each of the verses represents one letter of the Aleph Bet. That's a tongue tire. And so she changed it. And she's like, for, I'll give you the example for Aleph. May we be blessed. May our ways be blameless. May we walk in the Torah. May, be, may we be happy by keeping his testimonies. May we seek him with a whole heart. May we do no injustice. May we walk in his ways. May we keep your precepts diligently. May our ways be steadfast to observe your decrees. May we not be ashamed when we consider all your commandments. May we praise you with an upright heart as you learn your righteous, as we learn your righteous judgments. May we observe your statutes. May we never be utterly abandoned. She did that for every single letter. It's just taking the verses, each verse, and turning it into a prayer for you. So you, you have a prayer for each week. So we'll be going through, you'll have a prayer. So maybe that's the way that you choose to memorize it. Um, people ask um, what, if we're going to memorize, what um, what version should I memorize from? Oh, okay, my answer is, okay. I was going to say, Halisa, yes. Um, pick one or, or do your own prayer phrase. Because <laughs> what really matters is that you just know this is what it is in your heart. Because we all know that unless you're learning it directly from Hebrew, it's, it's, it's someone's understanding of that translation. So just pick one that speaks to you. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more maybe in a, about how to memorize better. And then, oh, I did it again. See, y'all be patient with me as I get, my, my mouse is super touchy as I go through this. And then we're going to do, like I said, a basic understanding of the Hebrew Aleph Bet. And then, um, like I said, we should be able to see the hieroglyphics then. We all know that this is the longest chapter. This is our introduction day, right? Uh, we don't know if David's the author. We don't know. I mean, it's some say yes, some say no. Some say it's kind of like he did a little bit all along. I've read multiple different commentaries on it. And again, it's an acrostic of the Hebrew alphabet. The, uh, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and there are eight verses for each one. Um, the biggest thing is that we see that Elohim is the creator God. I think that's the overriding theme of the whole thing, which I think is great. I see, I know Cindy, you were in our class last night and I can just see a couple of you. It's nice that we know, and Yvette, you were in there as well, is understanding that there is a, um, just the sovereignty of him again, right? Just, and I think that as we, as I believe he's calling us back into a different level of prayer, this could be it. Maybe the Amidah is not your thing. Maybe it's just, I just going to pray scripture. Yay. That we just sit with it and you just pray his word 
pray his word. This would be a great place to start. Again, so we have one letter, eight verses. We're going to do prayer. We're going to do memory. Um, we're going to be using discovering the energy of the letters. I'm going to encourage you. That's your homework every week is to go in and watch it. And I will, uh, I will, when we're done with this, this, I will go in and actually share my screen and show you if you don't know where it's at. Um, I'll give you an example. I have to make notes to myself here. But Brenda Stroth did an amazing job in each letter. She did each, each, it's about 20 minutes each one. So it might be an hour every week, but you can do it in parts. You can listen to it. You don't have to watch it. You could click the audio and just listen to her talk through it. But she goes through, what am I? What's my story? And where's Yeshua in each letter? So you're going to go through each one of the letters. There's also things in there, which I will show you. You could download flashcards. You can get as deep into this to know that letter every week, one letter, only one letter a week, and that you just hold on. That's what you're going to focus on is that, that one letter. And again, eight verses, interesting, at each one of those verses, um, if you look at them in Hebrew, they all start with that letter. So like the first eight verses start with the letter Aleph. The next eight verses start with a letter Bet. So it's kind of cool. Um, go forward. See, touchy mouse. There we go. I think that when I was going through the study on this and getting ready for this for all of us is that I've noticed that almost every single verse refers to God's word in some manner. You're going to hear throughout Psalms 119, it referred to, you're going to hear the law, the testimonies, judgments, statutes, ordinances, precepts, commandments, the promise, the way or ways. So you're going to hear his, when you're hearing those, we're going to see his word constantly being referred to that. I feel like it's David. So Dave, well, I'll just say that, but whoever wrote it, the author, how about we say that the author is constantly referring to his word because we know that the, everything in this is in, is in existence because he spoke, right? He spoke the word into existence. He spoke life into existence. He light. He said, let there be light. Let there be, that's how things were, were, were created. And so as we, there is so much power in his word and we know that Yeshua was the word become flesh. So as the more we know the word, the more we're going to know who our Messiah is because we know his word better. So there is, um, I had to move so I can see, um, there is a metaphor of walk the the metaphor of walking appears throughout the Psalm to express the totality of one's behavior and activities. So you're going to, you're going to hear, um, through the Psalm constantly talking about walking through things because it's going to be encompassing everything that we do. So by saying this, I'm just saying that this is encompassing everything that happens in our life. So does it apply to this? Yes. Does it apply to being a parent? Yes. Does it apply to being a woman? Yes. Does it, you know, pick it? Yes. It's our totality of everything. Does it apply to me when I'm angry? Yes. When I'm not acting like I should? Yes. When I'm doing great? Yes. It's not just for when you're a bad girl. And then that's the only time you can apply the word to you. And you have to go look at the dis discipline manual. It's not that it's also for to, to wash over you, to encourage and reinforce the good things that are happening in your life. Um, you have heard many of this and a lot of you will hear the walk you're in the law, you're walking in the law, but you're going to hear it through this Psalm to walk in the law. It's like this lyrical way, this song, this sing song way that is actually describing what it means to follow the Torah, the instructions, the law in every respect, not as a have to, but as a get to, as a want to, but as you walk this out, you'll, you'll see this ringing and get it getting, I hope that you get excited again about applying the whole Torah to your life. So then that you're walking in it the way that, that this David or this author says that. And then according to Psalms 119, the type, this type of walking consistently choosing to follow the path that God has revealed through the law, the Torah, his instructions, leads inexorbitably to a happy, blessed life. However, walking contrary to the law also causes trouble and suffering. You hear us say it all the time. We're not talking about a salvation issue. We're talking about when you follow Torah. And that's the one thing that a lot of your maybe friends and family that when they think you're in a cult, what are you doing? We've done away with the law. Okay. What we find is the thing is, is we're not talking about a salvation issue. We know how, wh why we're here. We know who saved us. We know that our Messiah is the only reason that we get through every day. <laughs> I mean, we know, we know that 
this is about how do I have a blessed life? How do I, it's no different than, than you're living in a home. There's rules in your home. Why do you have rules in your home? So there's not chaos. You have rules in your home so that your children are blessed. The children that walk in those rules in your home, they probably get a little more privileges and they have more trust and they're blessed in a different way. And those that aren't, they're not cursed, but they maybe have limitations. Remember, that's what that word curse is more about a limitation, not about a curse. The same thing goes for you drive on the highway. Guess what? There is more laws that your friends and family follow leaving their house to go to the post office and back or the grocery store and back than we can ever imagine. I mean, staying on the right side of the street. Why do you do that? Just so you're blessed and you're not in a car track, car crash. It's a protective thing to help you hit the mark of blessing, to help it make your life more simple. It seems like it's crazy. Some things we don't, they're the beast because I said so's, right? So just real quickly, we're going to go through. Here's Aleph. It's the first eight, one through eight. And the focus of Aleph is really that, and again, this is all printed out for you. You can uh, download this in PDF and just print it or not. Um, but it's God's, Aleph is really focused on God's word blesses those who keep it and the desire to keep it. That's those first eight. The next eight is for bet. And it's really the focus on those eight is going to be more about obeying God's word, that it's key to living a blessed life. Like we just talked about the next, I can't even see my screen. Good Lord. I will get this down before the end of 22 weeks. <laughs> I'm trying to move you guys. So I can see my screen. There we go. Then we have Gimel. And we pray to understand his word. Dalit is going to pray to be revived and empowered by his word. You guys feel a theme. Hey, Hey, keeping his word is the only thing that matters. Vav, for those next eight verses, the focus on that is salvation and hope in trusting in his word. Zayin, there is comfort in his word. Isn't it be nice we get through this and you know someone's struggling and you know, you'll know, hey, you know what, I have a really great section of Psalms 119 that, that and, or you're able to speak it or pray it over them that they're needing comfort and you're able to bring that comfort to them. Het, I will guard his word. That section that we're going to be under tet is blessing, is being, dis see, now I can't see again, is being discipled by his word. There we go. Yod, that section, the focus is fearing the Lord it equals keeping his word, which we'll talk about that. We'll talk about what is fearing, all those things. And then kaf, the next section, verses 81 through 88, is strengthen his word to endure persecution. How many of you know this may be something in the future that we may be having to deal with? Then the next section is Lamed, verses 89 through 96. His servants trust his word forever. Mem, verses 97 through 104. In that section of those verses, the focus is really about his word brings wisdom and understanding. It'll be fun as you hear those these letters. We should go back through this and see how does that focus line up with what that letter means? Can we make that connection? Nun is 105 through 112, and his word is a light on the dark path. Samek is 113 through 120, and the focus is kind of God rejects the double-minded, and his word and his ways require single-mindedness. This might be a challenge. I know for me, it's. I realize sometimes I can be double-minded in things because I can't quite I'm like, ooh, do I do, you know, so it'll be interesting for me how the father speaks to my heart in this section. Ayin, verses 121 through 128, prayer for preservation, okay, guys, preservation to those who keep his word. We'll say that over. Prayer for preservation to those who keep his word. <laughs> hey, 129 through 136. You guys hear me say all the time, I need to shut my pay hole because that is the picture of a mouth. His word is life, light, and understanding. Zadeh, 137 through 144. His word is truth and righteousness. Kof, 145 to 152. We want to desire his word. The Resh, 153 through 160, prayer for revival by his word. Almost done. Sheen, 161 through 168, love his word, his law, his commandments. And the Tav, our words should reflect and be connected 
to his word. If you guys, I love that. Keep going. Um, kind of the overall theme for me um, in teaching this that the father brought me to is James 4, 8. And this whole pro the process of it. If we draw near to God, that he'll draw near to you. And um, I feel like us diving into one, this 119 course is, this is us drawing near to him because it is focused on his word. And if Yeshua, our Messiah was the word become flesh, and this is really pushing us in, like we said earlier, then if we're, that is us drawing near to him, then how exciting that he's going to draw near to us. So some tools that you're going to need for this course over these next few weeks is you're going to want that discovering the energy of the letters course, uh, the Rudy cafe, it's in your library. You already have it. There's nothing to get. If you wanted something extra, there's a few books that I use. So I just put the ones that I've been using recently, um, just on the letters is the strength of a woman. Lauren Cruz wrote it. We did it as a book club last summer. She's going to, she says, she's going to come in anytime, you know, she wants to hop in on this and be in this as well. Um, she authored this book. It's a great little book. It's, it's taking Proverbs 31 and going through each of the letters from that perspective with some beautiful stories of real women in that letter. So again, this is as deep as you want to go. However, however, whatever time allows for you, please don't let this overwhelm you. I'm just giving you options. I have this book and um, I'll, let me stop my share and that's all I have. I have the other one I use. So this is the strength of a woman. I think this they're in the library, the links to them. If you go to your library, the links to all of them are in the um I'll share my screen and show you. This is that one, the strength of a woman and uh, really so embarrassed because I have coffee and stains and stuff, but it's a really good, I really enjoyed that great study. And if you have friends who are, are uh, curious and they just want a little, no, little, no, little deeper Hebrew understanding of the word um, they're, you know, really deep and still in their Christian church, even if that's still you and you're thinking about what could I do? That's a really great bridge book. It's a really great book for you could offer your friends who are like, say, oh, this is a good Bible study. I've sent it to women and say, this is a really good study for your women's home group. And they love it. And they don't feel, they don't feel threatened by it's too Hebrew or Jewish or anything. It's a really, I think it's good. And then, um, hi, love this book, Hebrew for Goyim. I use this book a lot and uh, it's just my reference when I'm looking up a letter and I need a quick reference and it just goes through and it's really quick. It's only a couple pages on each letter. So it's, um, it gives me a quick snapshot. And then, um, my other one that I use is the book of letters, um, by Lawrence Kushner. And this is really sweet. It's again, just a couple pages on each letter, but it just gives you not to overwhelm you. It just gives you a couple. So that's again, not required. It's just what, what I would ask, because we are going to refer to it. I don't want you to feel um, left out. I'm going to bring up the, um, your library and let you see what this looks like. So when you sign in, you can either sign under member login, or you can log in wherever. There's lots of places to find it. You log in, it should probably already have all your stuff. And then you have your library. Now, if you have the, uh, the Kajabi app, K-A-J-A-B-I, the Kajabi app on your phone or mobile device, you can sign in with your same email and your same password that you sign into your Rooted Cafe library with. And you can do all of this on your phone. And it's kind of nice on the go because you can listen. So if you um, scroll down, I don't want to make you sick. Here's the Olive bet, discovering the energy of the letters. You'll go here. And then you'll just start. And so um, what, let's see, she has flashcards. If you're, like I said, you can take this, learn a flashcard every week. She has flashcards and practice letters and pages. So if you want to print those out, you could actually practice writing it. So you can get as deep with this as you want. And then each, here's what I was talking about. Each letter has, who am I? What's my story? Where's Yeshua? And they're short little videos, but they're also, when you open the video, if you look here, she tells you how to say the letter. If you're like, I don't even know how to say it. You can click this and it'll be me. You click it and have to download it apparently. And Aleph. Hear it? Aleph. Oh, I miss my friend. You hear her little voice. She'll tell you how to say the word. Um, she has class notes. If you want to go into that, some vocabulary words that have Aleph in it. Uh, and then if you just want to the, look over here, what am I audio? You don't want to watch the video. You just want to listen while you're doing something. There you go. Click it. That's all you need to do. Hope that's helpful. So that's 
A lot, huh? It's a lot in that you can do. So you can do this as just show up every Thursday morning and be like, oh, my hair's a little way. You can show up and be like, okay, I'm just showing up and absorbing. Or you can dig deep and say, I want to, I want to have, I want these eight verses to just encompass my life for this week. I like, in some ways, can I, I would like to hear from some ladies. How do you memorize? Let's kind of open up for that. What's some good tips for memorization? Tammy, are you a memorizer? Yes, I am. I use song a lot. Okay. Make up something to remember the words and use the song. And that helps me. That's good. Good. If someone comes across someone who's already come up, made up a song for Psalms 119, that would be great. And then we just learned the little, maybe they let it section at a time. Misty, if you're bored and you want to make up a song for us, we love you. Misty, do you memorize still? Are you a good memorizer? I do. Um, I actually took a class, an Evelyn Wood memorization class, basically. And um, it was very interesting. And she, basically the whole thing that she teaches has to do with relating things in your mind to something else, but very vividly and with emotion attached. And that helps you remember. So like if I was making a grocery list, I literally do this. When I make a grocery list, I've got to go pick something up at the store. I will visualize a piece of furniture in my room and let's say that I need toothpaste. And I will visualize this huge pile of toothpaste on my nightstand. Like I can't even get to the nightstand because it's just covered in toothpaste. And when I get to the store, I won't remember. I mean, I won't forget that that's what I need. And I do that. I can go around my bedroom and make my whole grocery list and not forget anything. That's good. Good example. Any, any thoughts on like how you, how would you do that then for, um, how then would you do like, so let's just take a, the first section of verses, like an eight verses like that. How would you do that? Just, would you take it thematically? Yes. And I would attach each individual verse to something. Does that make sense to everyone? Does that kind of make sense? I mean, it makes sense on the toothpaste. I'm just curious about practical application on. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm looking up this, I'm looking at my verses now. Cause that's what, I mean, this is a challenge for me because I haven't been memorizing for a very long time. I memorized a lot as a child. I memorized as a young adult, but I haven't been memorizing. I would say in a, in a while, I haven't spent time memorizing and, and I've failed in this area. And I would like to, I'm going to, get, I'm going to, I'm going getting, jumping back in. So like your first verse that will, the first verse we want to memorize is blessed are those whose way is blameless and who walk in the Torah of Adonai. Misty, you want to give us an example then? <laughs> blessed. So say it one more time. Blessed are those whose way is blameless and who walk in the Torah of Adonai. So I think the way I would remember it is for me, the key word in that is the walking in the Torah. So I would visualize a person going back to that historical thing. I would visualize a person walking around as a Torah scroll, letting other people see them with a, with a, um, with an exuberance of that blessed place of walking in him and with him. Good. So good. Did you guys get that? That's a good example. So, so there's eight verses, there's seven days. So, you know, maybe you do two on one, you do two on one day and getting those in just memorizing or getting a good understanding of some people, who else? I'd like a couple other ideas. Who, who else memorizes and what works for you? Just unmute your, you're good. You don't have to be seen if you don't want to just unmute and say, Yvette, are you a, Yvette, are you a memorizer? Do you have any tips? No, I'm terrible. I, I find that as I'm getting older, it's, it's harder for me to memorize. So I'm listening to tips. Good. You know, that's true. And we think, and I think that that is, is something that is, isn't necessarily have to be a truth 
that we grab onto, right? But I'm with you because I've said, oh, well, I'm getting older. So it's harder for me to memorize and to remember things. And I'm like, no, you know what? No, I'm going to go out of this world keener and sharper than I came into it. So thank you, Father, that you're renewing my mind and you're making it sharper and then I can remember things. Um, so Bonnie, are you a memorizer? I wish I was. <laughs> can you hear me? I can. Okay. Yeah. No, but I was just thinking, what would I do? I'd probably take, I'm just looking at taking each one and memorizing each verse per day and going over and living, actually really contemplating, you know, it's life. So, I mean, bringing that to life like that in, in my daily, and then the next day, just bring, probably bring that one in with the next one and just keep over and over. Uh -huh. Um, that sounds how I, I like meditate how you, on it, I guess. Just keep that would be good. I like that. Yeah. That, that resonates for me. I like that too. Writing it out, right? Like you, yeah, can, right. you well, can yeah. write it and, and memorize and not, you're not thinking of it as, oh, I got to memorize my verse, but, at, but instead that you're like, how am I going to bring this in? Cindy, I see your hands up. Go for it. The way I would teach school kids to do it is you would write the verse you want to memorize on a whiteboard. And then each time you say it, erase one of the words so that one of the words has to be in your memory. And then by the time you're done erasing the words, it's all in your memory. I mean, so that has that, worked for me in the past. That's a good, good tip. Anyway, Does that yeah. make sense to everyone? So you write the, you're writing it out on a whiteboard and it could be even little, like I have like the little, you know, dollars, you get the little dollar store ones. I used them teaching my granddaughter online and you just write the little, the verse out. And again, remember you can, I'm going to just give you some freedom. You, I, I remember in Sunday school, you had to learn it King James. And if you didn't do all the letters and you didn't do it all right in King James and you got marked off, you didn't make, I'm going to give you freedom to paraphrase. <laughs> you can make the verse, you know, find if it's a version you like and, and what it means to you in that, you know, you're not adding to or taking away from it. You're just committing something and meditating on the concept in your heart, write that out for yourself. And then you, mem you, erase a letter or erase a word and keep reading it until you've got it all erased and then you've now memorized it but so you could add you can do all these things great hi lauren we were just talking about you i was like y'all need to have this book for these next 22 weeks and <laughs> it is in your library and it's in your store so you can find it all crystal you are unmuted do you have a tip I just wanted to let you know that Jen, Jen Gorski. Oh, hi. Up, you know? <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey. Go for it, sister. Hi. Yeah, I wanted to um, show you guys. I just memorized creation with my children. And so, and now we're doing the Ten Commandments. But not that everyone has to paint their whole wall, chalkboard. But like you said, like a whiteboard or have like an area. And we've been drawing and it's been so cool. Hold on one second. Let me turn this. So you can see, and so I've been illustrating more. Look at you. She has the coolest stuff. Very good. On the whole wall, go girl. <laughs> That's awesome. You're muted if you're trying to talk. I am muted. Sorry. Um, I just do it with like different colored chalk so I can keep doing it over and over again. Like with the 10 commandments, I'll just do it over and over, but you could do it with colored pencils too. And like rainbow write them in different colors. And so I've been doing that with my kids and like illustrating and then rainbow writing. And it's been really good with like he learning Hebrew too, because I'm really bad at memorizing, but the illustration, if you're bad at memorizing, I heard, I read that illustration will work better. So but I guess Great. walking it out too in your daily life is probably like the same thing as illustrating almost, you know, cause you're, you're remembering it in that side of the brain. So I don't know. I'm excited. Very good. Very good. Lauren, how are you, how do you memorize? Are you, I was just, I, I, you, you missed me confessing that I haven't memorized since I very, really, since I was a young, young in twenties. So it's, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a, a I day love or two. the illustration idea. Cause I think I am that person that I'm much more visual and, and I, I'm not a slave to word for word, you know, yeah. if I can get the concept of it and the idea of it, that's fine. Yep. And, and then, I mean, I tell my kids, cause I'm a teacher as well. You know, if you can 
speak it or teach it to someone else, you know, you've got it. So practice, you know, just say, hey, I, this is what I've learned today. And even if it's a paraphrase, you, you, you're ahead of the game. So those of you that are like big on your social media and you like posting stuff, what if you just post, you know, come up with something cute and you're artistic and you want to come up with something every day that represents the verse you're memorizing and you incorporate your, your posse or your community, whether what your social media community, or maybe it's your family. What if you have a, you develop a text thread and you send your, your family, everyone in your family and saying, I'm going through this, help me learn it. But secretly you're also giving them the word and it doesn't return void, right? You're Mm -hmm. giving it into their, into them and you speaking the word to them, coming up with something fun, even if it's just a text or it could be a picture or it could be something, whatever your creativity is, it could just be writing it out to them. But, um, that could be fun sharing it, reteaching it. We in nursing, when I was learning, it was see one, do one, teach one. So that's how you you learn to do something. I'm a, I'm a visual. So thank you, Jen, for that. I uh, take all my notes in different. I have a drawer right here and it's full of different colored pens. And so I do my notes. Everything's in different color pens. If you see me teaching my notes that I'm teaching and are in different colors. So I know, oh yeah, that's in the orange section and I'll go and I don't get lost in what I'm saying because I do it by color. So maybe that's for you. You just write the colors out in the word. Don't make it hard. Please, please don't make this be one more thing where you're feeling overwhelmed. <clears throat> I think that that's the struggle struggle for me with the Ruta cafe. Misty can speak up me, Misty and I are no Misty's. If you don't know, Misty is our CFO and right hand for me. And then crystal is my, my other hand. I have two right hands. <laughs> Crystal's our, our uh, assistant and she does all the things, but what, what the biggest struggle we have is that walking a line with giving you enough content that you feel like you're getting, you're getting value, but at the same time, not overwhelming you. So we encourage you just pick a, pick a thing. Don't feel like you have to do everything. It's all recorded. you don't have, don't get FOMO fear of missing out. Don't feel like that. Just pick a thing. And like, if you've picked this, do this with this too. If you're like, I can't do all these things, then, then just watch the video or listen to the, listen to the, the recording later, or just let it work for you. And if you feel that overwhelmed, would you reach out to me and say, I'm feeling overwhelmed with this you said to do all these things, or there's all this going on. Would you help me and let us are your guide? You can reach, they'll help you too. Our heart is that you're not overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Lauren, again, for reinforcing that it's not a verbatim, you don't, but unless you're a teetotaler, if that's the way you learn and you need to do it verbatim, sister, learn it word for word, K- K- KJV, you go King James version and you can sh- share it with us. We applaud you if that's how you are too. So all the ways. All the ways. So, question, and I, I apologize, I came in late, so you may have covered this. Th- this is probably one of the easiest ways. It's it's Aleph. It starts with Aleph. Aleph is an ox. It's number one. And so I would just summarize the whole thing. What is the strength? Because you got to look at the word picture. The strength for that first eight verses is, you know, this blessed or strong is the one who keeps the commandments and the statutes. And so you're number one, and if you're going to be a strong you know, follower, it's keep the commandments. And so it's just that simple. You may just want to just attach it to that visual. That's really good. And if you guys look back again, and this is, I'll just reshare really quickly. This was one of the slides we went through earlier. Again, Mm -hmm. you can print these out and you could print them out and have them. It's like, this is the focus of this, this Aleph. You can write, write all over this. Like when you start learning the characteristics of this letter and what you want to know about this letter. And then remember that the focus of this is going to be that This is, I'm blessed if I keep this and I want to have a desire to keep this. So that's kind of what Lauren is saying too, is Mm -hmm. that's how you're going to, you just make it be thematic. It doesn't, Mm -hmm. don't, don't over, don't make it too hard. That's Mm -hmm. what we're trying to say. Kim, are you, do you memorize Miss Allen? I don't know if you can talk. Yes, I do. I don't memorize a lot of things, but I, I I always have a project that I'm trying to memorize and, um, I'm a different, like I said last night, I'm kind of a different learner. I'm kinesthetic. So I always have to do things that I can manipulate with my hands and interact with it. That's not common for a lot of people, but if, if you need to interact, I have to have the cards to shuffle. Like I have to, put, I have to be able to put them in order. Like I'll, maybe I'll write one verse on many cards and try to put it in order. Um, Oh, that's a great idea. So a word on a bunch of different little cards or post-it notes or whatever you need, mm-hmm. and then you just put it up until you put it in order. Is that what you're saying? Or shuffle them and lay them in order. Is that what you're saying? 
We lost you. Yes, Kim. Hello, Kim. Finding is I'm, I'm learning more than I thought I was. Like the other day, I couldn't find it, and I thought, well, let me see what I can remember of the first line, and. I can't remember all of the first line in Hebrew, but I can remember a lot of it. So I didn't get too down on myself because I'm thinking that's, it's not common to me. So just that I remembered any of it was okay with me. So I can, I, nothing says I can't have the card anytime I want it. <laughs> exactly. So. Exactly. Really good. That's good. And I know like, <clears throat> that's one of the things <clears throat> it's not off topic, but you could make up something like like what we just saw that Jen was do, did on her whole wall. She had that whole thing done out. But what you can do is like, these are from, they were, they were gifted for me from Christine Vallis. And um, she sent me her month cards and she does the chalkboard teachings. So she makes the, she has flashcards on each of the months and that she has her, she'll do like a chalkboard teaching on the month. Well, you can do something like this on your verses where you just make up a, make it up on a chalkboard or up on your whiteboard and then take a picture of it maybe, and then make yourself a little flashcard. And then she has all the things about that month on the flashcard. And if you come up with something really cool, please share it with us and we'll add it on here so we can share much like um, Amanda added, made the, the prayers. Again, I encourage you to do the prayer. Maybe just reading the prayers for you is going to help you to memorize it. Cause it really is you guys, if you are just memorizing a prayer, this prayer, which you can download this, it's in your library, that it says um, those eight, it's just eight lines of the verse, but she turned it into a prayer for you so you could pray it over yourself. So if you're just praying that over yourself every day or praying it out loud once a day, you're going to kind of memorize it and you're going to get it. So um, there's lots of, lots of ways. Does anyone need help knowing where to find this, that in their library? It's okay if the answer is yes. I can help you find where we have all this stuff at. Do you want me to show you real quick? We have the time. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Crystal. All right. So let me go back to sharing my little screen. Sha, sha. Okay. So let's get out of your Olive Bit course. And you can always, I always use the back arrow, but you can always click your little face and then go to your library like that. <clears throat> if you want to fast, go back here. So I have already, the last course you were in is always going to be up at the top. So that's why that this one is showing up. But if you haven't jumped in yet, you'll scroll down and find it. I won't make you sick, but you scrolling, 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 scrolling. So we also mentioned, um, I'm going to do this before we go to this. Another tip, I mean, I hate to say it almost to overwhelm you, but if you click on the cafe calls, and you go down to the next page. Oh, right here, book club, click book club. Oh, look at the strength of a woman with Lauren Cruz. And guess what? All the letters, the all, if you can go through each one of these and you can, you can actually watch the book clubs. You can see, you can, here's all the different, uh, we did the book club for that. You can listen to the book club. Okay, let me go back to my main. Oop, let me go back. Yeah. That's exciting. I forgot about that. Hey, there's one more tool. Go back and watch the book club if you, because you have nothing better to do. Um, and I just promised I wouldn't overwhelm you. Okay, back to your library and you're scrolling and it's, I will put it up at the top because it's we're working on it right now. Gosh, you guys have so much stuff in here. Seriously. Okay. So you click on your ABCs. Um, if you haven't gone in here yet, you can look at, go through and just spend a minute in here. But like, this is your first Welcome to Psalms 119. If you want the outline that's in there. Now look at, here's the prayers. You click it and you download it and print it. Here's the introduction. That's the PowerPoint I went through. So if you want to kind of know what each letter is, and then I did a quick reference here. So also, if you look here, I've kind of gone through and just give you some extra information. I did give you a copy of this. Thank you, Bonnie, by the way, was my proofer. So I appreciate you. She found a missing link. So appreciate you for that. I love when you guys never hesitate to, to correct me. So thank you. So now we have two letters, het and tet, like they're supposed to be. But I did <clears throat> give you the, this is, you can print it or you can just look at it here. Does that, is that helpful for anyone? You can see all the things. And then again, at the bottom, the resources we've given uh, the strength of a woman, there's the link to purchase the book. These are the links to get those books. And then the, you already know how to find that. So, okay, any questions? That's all. today. That's all we're doing is we just want to do an overview. Next week we're going to hit. You have you have seven days now to jump into Aleph. 
you've got all the resources. You can read it. You can read it. You've got all these different places to make this as deep or as shallow. I don't mean shallow in a bad way, but you can just like put your toe in or you can like dive off the high bar into the deep end. Whatever you want to do, you'll get you'll get some amazing things no matter what you do in this. For me, this is something I um, want to go as deep as I can because this is what I'm going to one of my major focuses of what I want to go into because it's important to me because I, I, I want to, the memorizing for me is really important, but jump in. I want to encourage you if you're going to use resources to maybe do extra curricular research on some letters. You might have heard us if you were on our call last night, their discipleship call, which was amazing on the Amidah prayer. But if you want to um, dig deeper, be careful going to Hebrew for Christians. I, I use it as a resource, but I always use it with the little star. I want to give you guys the little star to tell you that um, they are a uh, not pro Torah and they are, they have replacement theology. They do believe that, that, that if you don't understand what that means, we can talk about it another day. So there's some, so just be mindful of what you are. You can spit out the bones. We say that with everything. We say that if you're reading something that's super uh, rabbinical sages say, you hear us say that all the time. If you're diving into something that's Talmud, what do they say about the olive? What are they saying about the, what's this commentary? If you're in the Humash and you're reading, which is, you know, very rabbinical uh, commentary, just read it, pray as you're reading and let the Holy Spirit guide you, spit the bones out. If you're super new to this, I encourage you not to jump into all those things right away. Just kind of keep it simple, sister. Kiss. All right. Questions, comments, any more memorization tips? Are you feeling good? Are you excited to start this week with Aleph with the first eight verses? Praying, memorizing, Crystal? Yes. You got a good crystallism for us? No, but I just want to confirm that this was the introduction and we're starting with Aleph next week. Yes, like next week we will be diving into Aleph and I would love it to be round table. I would love for all of you that I will spend just a few minutes of sharing an overview and then we're going to open like I am right. I'm looking at all of you on a gallery view right now. I want us to be talking like, wait, no, this is what I found or oh, when I was memorizing, this is what happened. I would love this to be interactive. As if, again, we're sitting in my living room and we're all talking about like what I learned, like, oh, you know what? I still have Lauren's book and I read this and I didn't, I looked at it from a, some, from a one, I read the Proverbs 31 from a 119 perspective. And this is what I got. I got something super new and exciting. So, which by the way, which was super helpful for you think that your, your input, I'm new, nobody cares. Everyone wants to hear everything you have to say. I don't care if you, this is your first day and you just started you just heard the word Torah yesterday. I want to hear everything you have to say, because it's like going, I remember going to Disneyland with my daughter when she, the first time, and I had gone, I lived in San, in Southern California. So I went all the time. The first time I took her, it was like the first time I had ever been because I saw it through her eyes. So I love seeing all of this through your eyes. It, it makes me excited. So please feel excited about sharing and don't, or if you've been doing this for so many years and you're like super expert, don't feel like, oh, I don't want to be a know-it-all. Please be the know-it-all. Jump in, share what you have to say. We all want to hear it. Be, be all the things. Okay. I'm excited. Any other questions? I don't want to leave anybody who has something to say. I want you to feel heard. Karen, yay. From what time is it in South Africa right now? It's early enough, huh? You're eight hours. Still light outs. Oh, you're cold. It's you're cold and we're hot. Yes, yes. It's almost six o'clock, 6 p.m. here. Yay. Well, blessings to you, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Christy, nice seeing you. I see all the names. Kimberly. We had a couple Kimberly's and Taylor. Anyone else with anything to add? Hi, Lori. Cindy, anything else? And Bonnie, anyone else want to add anything? Okay, good. Okay, you guys got work to do, right? Go in, start dive in, go find the stuff. And and I and if you're like me, maybe you've been doing this a little while, um, spend some time, um, maybe do something you haven't done before. You know, try a different turn on it. I'm excited to hear what the Father speaks to your heart. So, okay, guys, we'll see you next week. I can't wait to hear what you learned. So exciting.